Hello everyone, this is the Zeal for Healing YouTube channel with Brother Mahan Malak. And in today's video, we're going to discuss the history of biological warfare on American citizens by the U.S. government. The reason why I thought this was important to share with all of you is because through the research that I've done on this topic, I have come to the conclusion that this is one of the root causes of the rising epidemic of chronic diseases and sicknesses that have taken place in the United States over the last 50 years. I also think that this info is vitally important for all of us on the quest for optimal health because if we understand what they did to us and how they did it, we will be in a better position to be able to defend ourselves against it. So with that said, uh, let's get started. Um, this article here comes out of Priceonomics. Uh, I won't be covering it in its entirety, but if you want to check the rest of the information yourself, the link will be in the description box below. So um, let's get started. How the U.S. government tested biological warfare on America. As leaves turned red and as San Francisco subdued into the smoky autumn of 1950, Edward Navin lay dying in a hospital bed. A rare bacteria had entered his urinary tract, made its way through his bloodstream, and clung to his heart. A bacteria that had never been seen in the hospital's history. Before researchers could hypothesize the bacteria's root cause, 10 more patients were admitted with the same infection. Doctors were baffled. How could have this micro presented itself? For nearly 30 years, the incident remained a secret until Ed, Edward Navin's grandson set out to bring about justice. What ensued was a series of terrifying revelations. For two decades, the United States government had intentionally, intentionally doused 293 populated areas with bacteria. They'd done this with secrecy. They done this without informing citizens of potentially dangerous exposure. They'd done this without taking precautions to protect the public's health and safety and with no medical follow-up. And it all had started in 1950 with the spring of San Francisco. So let's pause right here for a second. So what we are seeing is a man who, after being exposed to weaponized bacteria, end up, in, end up with a deadly bacterial infection that put him in the hospital. And this is all after the U.S. government released these agents into the, onto the U.S. population. Now, this was back in 1950, but I can point to many instances where this is still happening today. Um, Every now and then we hear stories about how the U.S. government is releasing bacteria in various subway systems across America, such as Boston and New York, to quote, uh, to, <laughs> to quote, unquote, test how the bacteria may spread in the event of a bioterror attack. In fact, there's even evidence to show that people are still being affected by various bacterial strands patented by the U.S. military back in the 50s that are still present today. Um, the reason being, once they spray these things into our environment, like any other organ organism, they can, over time, grow and become part of our ecosystems. Okay? So, moving on to the next passage. Biological warfare in the U.S. Biological warfare or germ warfare is the use of biological toxins or infectious agents, bacteria, viruses, and fungi, with the intent to kill or incapacitate humans. Historically, the United States' involvement in bacterial weaponry has been driven by competition and paranoia. In 1918, toward the tail end of World War I, the government briefly experimented with ricin, a deadly natural plant protein, and chemical warfare service 
and the excuse me, and the Chemical Warfare Service (CWS) was formed to oversee research and development. With the signing of the Geneva Protocol in 1925, which prohibited the use of biological and chemical weapons in international warfare, the U.S. government's interest waned until the 1940s. Biological weapons were largely considered impractical. Shortly after Pearl Harbor, the United States changed its mind. In 1942, President Roosevelt signed into action the first biological warfare program. Backed by the National Academy of Sciences, the initiative sought to develop biological weapons and explore vulnerability of the U.S. to such attacks. A government body, the War Research Service, WRS, was created to oversee these activities, and George W. Merck of the Merck Pharmaceutical Company was appointed to leadership. Uh, at, the, at his team's directive, Fort Detrick, the United States Biological Warfare Headquarters, was constructed in the small town of Fred, Frederick, Maryland. The facility then embarked on top secret plan to stage open air biological warfare tests using the unsuspecting American public. And here we see a photo of technicians running a, running a test on bacteria at Fort Dedrick back in the 1940s. By the end of World War II, the government had amassed a massive arsenal of biological weapons using anthrax and other various bacteria, all under the strictest secrecy. Soon, justification for continuing the research shifted to the need for national defense. Work in this field cannot be ignored in time of peace, Merck warned officials. It must be continued on a sufficient scale to provide an adequate defense. The government agreed under the command of University of Wisconsin professor and bacteriologist Ira Baldwin, a committee on biological warfare was established in 1948. When a sub subsequent report determined that the United States was particularly susceptible to attacks, a series of open air tests were ordered. The purpose of these efforts, to stimulate the effects of a realistic biological warfare attack. With a plan in place, a task force was set to unleash bacteria on San Francisco. So we see here uh, a connection uh, with wars and the need for the creation and study of bioweapons. Um, it, it was not until Pearl Harbor that the U.S. thought it was necessary to pursue the use um, of biological, uh, the use and the study of bioweapons. And by the time World War II was over, they had acquired all kinds of um, biological warfare weapons. Um, they switched the narrative by claiming that this was all in the name of national defense. Um, the only ones who end up paying for these experiments are not our enemies overseas, but um, all of us here at home. The idea that you need to spray bacteria into the air to test how it spreads in the event of a biological attack is ridiculous. Um, it, doesn't take, it doesn't take a genius to know that if you spray something contagious in the air that eventually it will spread because that's what bacteria does. But this is what they still sold to the public. And unfortunately, um, people bought it at that time. So moving on to the next section, San Francisco's bacteria fiasco. A confidential government report written in 1951 Special Report Number 142, Biological Warfare Trials at San Francisco, California, 20 through the 27th, September 1950, maps out the details of the city's top secret bacteria bombing. Through the tests, officials sought to accomplish three objectives. 
to study the offensive possibilities of attacking a seaport city with biological warfare aerosol, to highlight the vulnerability of the country's defense against such attacks, and to gain data on how bacteria affected a population. Nowhere in the report was the welfare of San Franciscans mentioned the test proceeded without knowledge or consent from the public. On the 20th, just three days after the 49ers made their NFL debut, the U.S. Army was deployed to San Francisco and began secretly showering the city with bacteria. Over a course of eight days, a ship puttered along the shoreline of the bay, releasing massive clouds of two different pathogens, both of which were, were supposedly non-pathogenic, yet realistic stimulants, stimulants that might be used in an attack. In to so this is what they always do. They always tell you that these things are harmless and they, have, they, won't have, they will have no effect on the population. And, and so they like to tell people these things, but, but in reality, um, it's never what they say. It's never as safe as they say it is. When, when, when you look further down the line to see what the end results are and how people are being affected by it 10, 20 years down the line. But let's continue. In total, six experimental warfare attacks were carried out, four with Bacillus globe. Globagai and two with Ceratia marcissens or Ceratia marcissens. Known for its blood red coloration, is one of two bacteria sprayed over San Francisco in 1950. Okay. The Army blasted these chemicals in 30 minute spurts producing huge clouds up to two miles in length, then pro proceeded to collect and assess dozens of samples of various collection spots across the city. As noted in the report, various aspects of each of the six tests were scrupulously monitored. Um, the time, the temperature, the wind speed, the humidity, but most important factors seem to, to be brushed over, the well-being of the people being sprayed. The samples collected yielded counts that gave some indication of how much bacteria was being inhaled. According to Lennar J. Cole, author of the biological warfare book, Clouds of Secrecy, it was quite a bit. Nearly all of San Francisco received 500 particle minutes per liter. In other words, nearly every one of the 800,000 people in San Francisco exposed to the cloud at, a, at normal breathing rate, 10 liters per minute, and held 5,000 or more particles per minute during the several hours that they remained airborne. Since the Army's bacteria presented similar dosage patterns, he continued, San Francisco residents were inhaling millions of bacteria and particles every day during the week of the testing. San Francisco residents' safety, safety was wholly brushed over in, a, in the report, which promptly concluded it's entirely feasible to attack a seaport city with biological, biological warfare aerosol. Oh, you don't say. It really took a genius to figure that out. That if you spray contagious material into the air in the form of bacteria, that that contagious material won't spread. Yeah. So um, what's taking place, what took place here in San Francisco um, was only just one out of 293 cases that would happen all across the U.S. And the worst part about this is the, the, that, the worst part about this is um, that experiments like this continue to take place in America up until today. And to show you what I'm talking about, um, here is a quick example, okay? We're just gonna jump to a, another article um, here right here um everyone's heard of chemtrails right 
take a look at this article right here. Um, a GMO bacterial weapon will soon be sprayed over Seattle. And um, let me bring this up a bit so you can see what it works. Attention, Contra watchers. Um, there might be a new threat streaking across America's skies. Last week, and this was this article came out April 26, 2016 of this of this year, by the way. Last week, the Washington State Department of Agriculture began spraying a controversial bacterial agent into the skies over Seattle, Washington, over Seattle, the Seattle, Washington area. Washington state officials claim that the bacteria known as Bacillus thuringiensis Kirchstacki or BTK is being deployed in response to a troublesome gypsy moth population that has been harming crops and other plant life in the region. BTK is a naturally occurring bacteria strand found in the gut floor of insects as well as on dead or decaying organic matter. That sounds so nice. However, the strain that will be sprayed over Seattle skies is a genetically modified version of the bacteria that was specifically developed for the Washington operation and whose effects on, on human populations of such a large scale are unknown. So what do you have here? Another, a genetically modified form of this bacteria, or in other words, a weaponized back form of this bacteria, a bioweapon being sprayed on the people here in Seattle. Lauren Jen Jenks, director of the Washington State Office of Enver Environmental Public Health Scientists, claimed that the untested genetically modified toxin is nearly harmless. We had our toxologist look at the entire ingredients for the BTK agent that we'll be spraying, and we have concluded that it, it is very low risk, very low health concern for the general population. Jenks told Seattle News Station KOMO. Nevertheless, state health officials have recommended that area residents remain inside for at least half an hour after the spraying. Officials have posted a spraying schedule on the Washington State Department of Agricultural, Agricultural website, although the, the notice states that spraying and times are subject to, to change. Spraying times are subject to change quickly. Um, many area residents are concerned with the spraying operation, and rightfully so. People who know their history, the effect of BTK on humans are li largely untested. And studies have shown that BTK can remain in the human body for long periods of time. Chemtrail watchdog groups around the world are hailing the Washington BTK operation as proof of government-run human experimentation. While they might need more proof before their claims can be substantiated, the U.S. government is known to have tested bacterial agents on unknown citizens in the past, such as, the, such as during the infamous o Operation Sea Spray. This, this clandestine bioweapons test saw the U.S. Navy release large amounts of supp supposedly benign bacteria into the air off the coast of California in September 1950. They claim intent of this was to test to track the spread of bacterial agents to help prepare for the poten potential biochemical terrorist attacks. Within days the Navy of, the, of the Navy releasing the bacteria, several area residents fell ill. One died from an infection caused by the bioweapon test. The Navy kept the details of this test secret for over 20 years, finally disclosing them to the public in 1976. Time will tell if the BTK bacteria is effective against Seattle's gypsy moth population and if the residents' health fears were justified. So here we go again. Okay, the same example, it's on um, um, the same thing taking place in our time right now, and this is happening all over. This is under the guise of agricultural, um, okay, the ag agricultural uh, situation that's, that's, that's happening, that's taking place here in Seattle. Um, 
uh, is this another excuse for the um, testing or for the testing and and and, and bioweapons experiments that they are doing on the American people? It might be. It definitely looks like it to me. But I'll let you decide. Okay. So, um, moving back to the article, and we're going to scroll down to finish this out. The aftermath. Um, the aftermath. San Francisco's incident was just one of the 293 bacterial attacks staged by the United States government between 1950 and 1969. It was neither the most heinous, heinous or the, nor the dead, deadliest. In 1955, as an experiment, the CIA sprayed whooping cough bacteria over Tampa Bay, Florida. Whooping cough cases in the area subs subs subsequently increased from 339 and one death in 1954 to 1,080 and 12 deaths in 1955. But no hard evidence has ever surfaced linking the two incidents. In an infamous 1966 test, federal agents crushed light bulbs containing trillions of bacteria on the New York subway, exposing thousands of rush hour commuters um, Rush hour commuters. The government never followed up to see how many people fell ill. Before a crowd at Fort Detrick in 1969, Richard Nixon terminated the offense, offensive use of biological weapons in the United States, effectively ending open air testing. Yeah, just so they could switch the narrative um, and, and hide it under different other other names. So, like agricultural spring okay so that's a lie but that was a, a false lie um, it would be it wouldn't be until 1977 that the public learned any of this was even going on and even then the u.s government never admitted its fault or seemed to show any indication um, of remorse for its actions Sarah seratia marson says the bacteria sprayed over San Francisco has since been declared hazardous. It can cause serious life-threatening illness, wrote the FDA in 2005. So this thing was still showing up, okay, as early as, as excuse me, as, as, as late as two, the year 2005, okay, because the FDA, FDA had to acknowledge it, okay, and, and um, take note of how this particular virus that this particular bacteria that was unleashed, um, how it was still have an effect on the people um, during this time, okay? Especially in patients with compromised immune system. Much other medical literature content, contends the same, okay? Today, um, and um, we'll stop right there, okay? We'll stop right there. So as you can see, they have now, um, as you can see, they, they ended a lot of the military type um, excuses. And now they have moved to, they have moved these operations over into the form of chemtrails to maximize, maximize the effect in their outreach on the public. Um, there's no coincidence about um, how about why chronic diseases are at an all-time high um, when they are literally spraying people with weaponized bacteria and viruses. Um, there is no coincidence. Um, so there you have it. Okay. Uh, you will be surprised to find out just how many different illnesses have been linked to some strand of weaponized bacteria that has been manufactured and released onto the public by the U.S. government. I mean, it's staggering. Um, it's 
staggering. Everything ranging from chronic fatigue, uh, from the research that I've done, everything ranging from chronic fatigue, respiratory infections, arthritis, heart problems, neurological disorders, autoimmune diseases, and, and more, depending on what strand you might be infected with. Um, these bacteria work in conjunction with uh, vaccines, poor diets, and unhealthy lifestyles to, to break a person down, you understand? Um, but despite of all this, um, be of good courage and remember that um, this info is here to help us and be not afraid because we know that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. So now that I, so now that I have uh, talked to you about the history of biological warfare in America on its people by the U.S. government, um, stay tuned for my next video where I will identify some of these bacteria in more detail and try to get to the bottom of exactly how they're how they are attacking the body and what are some of the measures we can take to uh, fight them off. Okay, so that's all I have for you today. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, if you found this helpful, feel free to thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, leave a comment below. All praise to Hayabash and Shalom.